Hey, what is up, YouTubers? This is Bloodseek. So this is my second video on TG and FPS, and I actually really like it here. I love TG and FPS. Uh, I love the community, the directors on this channel. One of my YouTube friends was like, "Hey, Bloodseek, I can get you a partnership with Machinima," and this was actually a couple of days ago. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I was like, "Well, you know what? I'd rather be partnered with TGN than I would with Machinima." Main reason is. Machinima seems too much like a company. They, like people are always worried about their views when they are partnering with Machinima or a director of Machinima. If they don't have enough, they get kicked out. And um, actually, like he was like promising he can get me one easily by Wednesday of next week. And with TG and FPS, you know, I'm close of having a partnership. I'm currently having about 840, 50 views daily. Uh, it did drop in the past day. But I didn't post a video that day, so of course it's going to drop. But I did post a video today, so hopefully I'll get more, or whenever this video is posted. So I decided to stick with TGN. The main reason I decided to stick with TGN is, you know, I do YouTube as a hobby. I never got in to get paid or any of that stuff. Actually, when I first started doing commentaries, I didn't know you could get paid for this stuff. Um, like, first person I ever watched was two bucks, and he mentioned how he gets paid doing YouTube videos, and I thought he was lying. I was like, no one gets paid doing YouTube videos. And then after a while, it's a convincing of some people. Some people are like, yeah, you do. Some of the commentators I was talking to, and they're like, and they show me proof, like how some bigger commentators talk about getting paid and stuff like that. I'm like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. But again, I know it's totally cliche, but I always use it as a hobby. But I do believe TGN is part of the future of gaming on YouTube, all the gaming videos. I believe TGN is going to be a big part of it in the future. I want to tell you guys a story that was very, very popular on my channel. And it's about a time I got stuck in the elevator uh, during wrestling camp. Uh, about five, six years ago, I was on a wrestling team. A pretty awesome wrestling team, I might add. But we every year, we went to Oklahoma uh, University's wrestling camp. And one day after practice, we went back to our girls, you know, to cheer for our next practice. I normally take the stairs every day because I'm really, really impatient. Like, I, I hate waiting for the elevator to come down, because we were like on the fourth story. And I'm like, it's just faster going up the stairs. So it always takes the stairs. So one day, um, whole entire wrestling team's walking back, and I start walking to the stairs. But the elevator just shows up like right when I walk in the door. And my wrestling team calls me, he's like, hey Bloodseek, hey Bloodseek, come on, come on, get in the elevator with us. And I turn around, and the elevator is completely, completely full. And I'm thinking, wow, this elevator's gonna get stuck. Well, I do not need to get in there, I'm gonna get stuck with them. But, of course, I want to be with the wrestling team. I want to be part of the wrestling team. So I was like, you know what, I'll do it anyway. So I want to be part of the team. So, I walk into the elevator with them, and a couple more people get in there. There's about 20 people in this elevator. The maximum is 12. So we're 8 people over. And we had this one really, really big guy that was almost 300 pounds. And he had gas, just had to add that. So we go on the elevator, goes about one story, and he gets stuck. And we all started laughing. We were laughing for about five minutes, and finally somebody was like, okay, we gotta call. So we hit the button to call, uh, maintenance, I guess it was, and they were like, okay, so how many people are on the elevator? And we all started laughing some more, and he was like, is it over 12? And we were like, yeah. And he goes, okay, uh, I'll try to get you out as fast as I can. If you guys have trouble breathing, give us a call and we'll have to call an ambulance because apparently you can run out of oxygen when you're out in an elevator, especially with a lot of people. So, 30 minutes roll around, we're all laughing, we're all talking. One of the guys, the big guy, farted a couple of times, so we all started laughing some more. And it was nasty, but it was a really, really funny experience. There was also this other little kid. When we got in the elevator, he was just sitting down playing his Game Boy, probably playing Pokemon or something. He was playing his Game Boy, just I guess sitting there riding the elevator. Pretty fun, I guess. I never did that when I was a kid, but when I was a kid, I loved riding the elevator. Elevators were awesome. And this kid was probably about seven, eight years old. So, you know, as time goes along, the kid can't stand up first off because the big fat guy actually is the one covering up, They're like right next to him, and no one can move in this elevator. So the kid is stuck on the ground, and after probably about about 45 minutes into being stuck in the elevator, we have trouble breathing. And that's never good. Breathing is something you need to do. 
and I never help. I'm the one that always cracks jokes. I was making perverted jokes and stuff like that, and but plus the guy farting didn't make the laughing help anymore. We're all talking. We're like, oh man, we're never gonna get back to our drones. We'll get to relax and shower before we go back to uh, our next practice, which is like two hours later. And as time kept going on, it get harder and harder to breathe. The kid that was sitting on the ground, his lips were turning blue. There was slight blue, but they were turning blue. So we all started like, you know, okay, freaking out. Like, okay, maybe this kid will die, which would be kind of sad, but it would be an awesome story to tell. And that's why I'm telling it. Maybe the kid dies, maybe he doesn't. Actually, he doesn't, you know. I wouldn't be telling the story if he died. Actually, I would, but it's kind of sad. So as time and time went on, we were still making jokes, but it was getting really, really hard to breathe. Like, everyone was huffing and puffing. The kids' lips were getting bluer and bluer. And, like, I would make a joke, and people wanted to laugh, but there wasn't enough oxygen in the elevator to laugh. <laughs> so it's kind of like, <laughs> like, really funny sound. But probably about an hour into it, the maintenance got us out. We could all breathe again. And we were scared that we were gonna have trouble. So when he opened the door, like we were like roaches when the light turns on. We are scattered, except the little kid and like the most mature person on the wrestling team, which normally I thought was me, but I guess it's not. It was the other guy who's like making sure the kid was okay. But you know, I don't like getting in trouble. I getting in trouble is wrong. All right, guys, this is Bloodseek. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this video, come check out my channel. I have more live stories. I really hope you like a lot of funny ones. Come over and check out my channel. Yeah. All right, guys, this is Bloodseek, and I'm out. Peace.